Flutie Shinzao is a senior writer for The Athletic. He joins us on the Volkswagen Dealers Expert Hotline. Fluto, hello, sir. Good morning. Hey, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, okay, your thoughts about the last... I'm just going to give it. leave the floor open to you. Your thoughts about last night. Well, that's a penalty all day. Uh, excuse me, a, a goal a goal overturned all day. And you could call it a penalty, too. Uh, if, if some refs uh, would not be out of line in terms of calling Sam Bennett for a cross-check on Charlie Coyle on the power play. And then you you look at the play, you, you hear what Jeremy Swayman and Charlie Coyle and Jim Montgomery said, what was what was the goalie supposed to do? You got a big man in Charlie Coyle, six foot three, two hundred, I think, twenty pounds. He's on top of his right pad. He can't get over because he's been knocked into Jeremy by Bennett. And I guess the league rules that okay, it was it was it happened so quickly that he wouldn't have if if the impediment hadn't been in place that Jeremy still wouldn't have had time to get over there uh, to stop Bennett's shot. That's I don't know. That's that's a tough call. So that's hey, the Panthers are up three to one. They deserve to be up three to one. The Bruins needed some breaks to be competitive, and they didn't get any last night. And we're not even we, we haven't even talked about Sam Bennett on Brad Marshall. Yeah, uh, well, we'll get to that too, Fluto. I just want to be clear though, because there was some confusion last. Oh, night. if you were watching it on TV, the dumb play-by-play guy couldn't get over himself. He was well, trying to justify the call over and over again. And God. they were they were just clarifying that they could not have gone back and retroactively called the penalty on Bennett. What you're saying is some officials would have called the cross check on Bennett in the moment, but at the very sure. least, once they saw the replay, disallowed the goal because of that cross check. Of course. If you look at the way the rule is written, if if a defending player is pushed into the goalie by an attacking player, then the goal is disallowed. And that's 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 what the replay showed. Was you're in the press area? Is is everyone just completely shocked? I know it's not. You guys aren't like you know yelling and screaming and stuff or rooting up there. But was everyone like Jesus? I can't believe this just happened. Uh, well, I, I can only speak to my own reaction. I'm looking at at it, thinking, okay, that's a goal, and then you look at the. You see it being challenged, and you're like, well, "What's going on here?" Because you didn't see the the actual interference at first, but then you see the cross check and how Charlie Coyle got sent right into the goalie. Then you're thinking, "Oh, this this is coming back," and and you look at the actual moment of the game. Uh, the coaches know. Jim Montgomery knows. The the video coaches know. If that if if that's a good goal, then they're back on the kill. And what team wants to go on the kill right after you had the game tied? So they uh, they had to be certain that that goal was going to be overturned, uh, and it was not. What do you, do you think, Jim Montgomery should get on the officials more off ice, like uh, in in front of the mics? We've heard you've heard coaches work on officials. Uh, there was talk of Brad Marchand during the Toronto series yelling at Montgomery for not going after the officials enough. Uh, you've seen coaches do it. Do you think Montgomery's too soft-spoken when it comes to this stuff? Uh, no, he was, he was giving it to one of them pretty good. Yeah, after, on the bench. I'm talking about the after after the games, before the games. I'm talking about that. Oh, sure. Yeah, and, and Don Sweeney, that's that's part of his job, too, in the series, is that, he, that Don has direct communication with the series supervisor from the league, uh, who's in charge of, of the referees. And Don's actually going to address the media this afternoon, which is unusual for Don. So maybe he has something to say about uh, Bennett, about Marshan, about Coyle, about Swayman, about all that. Um, but bottom line is the Bruins are, are in one, and they're going to need some breaks um, to, to keep on playing. And so far they haven't gotten any. Okay, well, you mentioned the Bennett hit on Marshan. Uh, we hadn't seen the angle that shows that he threw a right hook to Marshan's face until this weekend. Uh, that video now, everyone's seen it. Oh, well, actually, some of our listeners haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, Bennett... Hits Martian with the right hook. Um, Fluto, in your opinion, first of all, what could the league have done? Should they have done something if they could? And what is your feeling on the whole situation? At least a fine. Um, like, yes, the the video did not. Uh, we did not see that angle until yesterday, Sunday. Um, so it's uh, it, whatever. Whatever it happened in terms of the league, a they didn't have that angle or B they had that angle and they saw nothing worth either suspension or fine either way. That's it's egregious. 
It's egregious because it's clear as day from that angle that he's skating right at him. He's bracing for the hit, but he, he slugs him. Uh, he, he gets in that, that, that right hand right right to, to Brad, the, the side of his head. So uh, and we didn't see that angle uh, before, and you, you could kind of make a case that maybe there wasn't something there in terms of the other angles, and you had the slow motion and all that, but that angle shows it clear as day. So uh, I don't know why the league didn't uh, see merit in terms of at least a fine, and I think that would have made the Bruins at least kind of feel a little bit better about the situation, but to have Bennett skate completely, uh, it's a mystery. And am, am I wrong in thinking that the league or the officials before the game would at least have the inclination if they did not say to Bennett, like, we're keeping an eye on you, like, that becomes a, a, a part of the focus of the officials because they know re- there could be retribution, they know that Bennett's skating on thin ice. Do you think that he would become, like, of – a player of of more note to them than usual. You're talking about last night? Yes, like dur- before the game last night, like during the game. I just want to say, because Bennett, because it was Bennett that did the cross-check that scored the goal, that it's even more bothersome to me because, like, Bennett was a player of focus, right? Like, despite the fact that they didn't find him or suspend him, they know that he hit Marshan. They knew Marshan wasn't playing in the game. Like, wouldn't he be a – you'd focus more on him, you would think, wouldn't you? Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, we saw we all saw Maroon going after him all night too, uh, and the rest of the players too. So yes, you would think that. I, I don't know if if either of the referees had a word with Bennett, but the general the general overview is that the, the league has instructed everybody to be on watch during the series, and this was before all of this uh, nonsense. The, the after Kachuk, uh, Dex, uh, Pasternak, it, it was it was. The, the the red lights were on all over the place in terms of this is going to be highly scrutinized um, and we're going to be keeping an eye on everything. So uh, who knows? Maybe that message got crossed up somewhere because, uh, yeah, that's, that's some, some some calls have, have slipped slipped through. Yeah, wow. and, and, and just the last thing I'll ask on officiating, Lindholm with the two, I mean, when the, it was the power play on the Lindholm interference call and then they got called on another one against Kachuk and I don't know what the hell was going on there. Uh, I I don't I know your job is not to just focus on the officiating and that hasn't been the entire series, but it was really bad last night. Did you think those Lindholm interference calls were justified? Uh, borderline, but hey, you can make the case that Charlie McAvoy's hit on Sam Reinhardt was borderline too. Like some referees would have called that interference just because the puck's not really there. Mm. So okay, it's it's a, there's a little bit of gray area in terms of those, but the bottom line is the Bruins. That takes away so much momentum when you are playing on the line and, and possibly being undisciplined and going to the box. You can't. You have to play a perfect game, get some luck, get the get the goaltending uh, A+, plus, uh, and get breaks to beat them because the Panthers are so much better than the Bruins, so much. Yeah, that's um, obvious. And yeah. None of this is lining up for them, so you, you, you have to stay out of the box against these guys. Is it is it over now, do you think? Uh, with the, this loss, it, it, like, is there a way that the Bruins can win this series? In your opinion, well, the goalie has to be outstanding. It has to. Be, Jeremy has to steal three straight games. That's a tough ask, just because of hey, they've gotten to him, and he can't. He can't be perfect. You can't. That's that's no formula for success. To to, to cross your fingers and pray that your goalie can save you, uh, because we've seen as good as he was in the first period. I don't know about that 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 Lundell goal. Right, that was yep. that was quick. Yeah. There were some bodies in front, but I don't think he was expecting it. He has to be expecting it. That was a quick play. I don't know if that that's a goal that that should go in. But again, he's but you you can't uh, uh, the the volume of shots that Florida is taking on the Bruins in comparison to what the Bruins are getting on Bobrovsky, who who has not been good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just it's it's one sided. So it's it, it doesn't look good for the Bruins, especially if Brad is unable to go. Um, but that's that's just one of the reasons why they're not in it. The, the the bottom line is is the Panthers are better. And two quick things, Fluto. The uh, you know the the shot disparity because you know we're all about the officials today and those calls yesterday. But um, the the fact that when they did get a shot early on goal from Carlo, they scored. And the, there's something to be said for just taking shots when there isn't a bunch of traffic in front of the net. 
How much of this, you know, do you blame on the, the, the continuing inability of the Bruins just not be not being able to get any shots anywhere near the net? Yeah, A, they don't have the puck enough to shoot. So that, that's got to improve. They have to improve their possession. But yes, um, that was that was a cupcake that Carlo threw on that. And, and look what happens. Yep. So uh, the the more the volume goes up, the, the better the chances are. Now this is this this kind of goes counter to what the Bruins have played. That they prefer shot quality over quantity. They want two bodies in front. If it's a point shot, they want at least two bodies in front taking away the goalie's eyes. If if it's an unscreened shot from the outside, that uh, that's a turnover sometimes in their eyes. Um, that they want to wait for bodies. They want to wait. Um, for for some some havoc to to take place in front of the net to improve their chances of going in, but that's it's uh, you can't always wait for the perfect play, especially in the playoffs, especially when you, when you have no more uh, margin for error left. So and and you look at the way the, the goalies played, not good, not good enough for Florida. So that 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 that's yes. That that is that is on the coaching staff too, to have some some um, some wiggle room in terms of the game plan to say, hey, you got to get pucks on this guy. You have to. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but let's uh, let's pump up the volume in terms of the shot quantity. And I apologize if you mentioned this already, but is there an update on Marshan in terms of what exactly he's dealing with or when he might be back? No, we won't know until this afternoon. Uh, perhaps. The GM will, will address it, uh, whether he's traveling, even whether he's going to play uh, next game. Uh, we don't know. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Fluter Shinzao, you're the best uh, senior writer for The Athletic. Uh, thank you so much for the time. Read him in The Athletic. I do. Thank you, Fluto. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Toucher and Hardy here. For more Bruins analysis and opinion, hit this playlist.